the last place I wanted to be was Frost Nippistan. This one's wife. Royal versus quasi-royal. One of the significant criticisms that has been labelled at the Sussexes is that they wanted to leave as working members of the royal family so that they could seek their own path and achieve financial independence, but thereafter they have seeked to monetize their royal connection, for instance, they regularly use the titles, particularly this one's wife, and also the fact that they have behaved in royal, as royals or as working royals in all but name. This has been particularly evidenced by the two recent quasi-royal tours that have been taken of Nigeria and Colombia, whereby they have turned up, surrounded by security, attended certain events and ceremonies, being treated as guests of the country. Although they do not represent the United Kingdom, they do not represent the United States, and they do not represent the royal family. As a consequence of the fact that this one's wife and Harry would be nobodies were it not for the fact of their connection to the royal family, Harry by birth, this one's wife by marriage. They are wholly dependent upon their status as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and Harry as being Prince Harry for people around the world to recognise them. Take away those titles and that status and what have you got? A chap that was in the army for a period of time? Well, irrespective of what he did during that time, one should still recognise the fact that he engaged in service and that those that are in the army, even if it is in the allegedly cosseted manner of the one that Harry experienced, nevertheless, service of that nature should always be recognised and respected. This one's wife, mediocre actress, runner of a blog, and that's it. Neither of them are talented, neither of them are particularly intelligent, neither of them are particularly charismatic. They don't have anything meaningful to say, they don't have anything brilliant to share with the world, although this one's wife, of course, driven by her narcissism, regularly believes that she does. Nevertheless, in order to try and impact upon people, and for this one's wife, for the pursuit of the prime aims, it is the case that she behaves as if she were still a royal but again, wants it on her all on her own terms. But what do people think about this in terms of the places that they go to? How do they regard this one's wife and Harry? Yes, we've seen the pictures released through their careful control of their media outlet of people applauding them, of people clapping and so forth. But what were the real welcomes actually like? And in order to provide a meaningful comparison... Let's look at some actual royals and how they were greeted. I'm going to show you some contrasting footage now, which is of the 2012 tour undertaken by Prince William and Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, as she then was, and shows you the kind of greeting that they had from people compared to what the reaction to the Sussexes was when they first turned up. Here's the footage.
I'm sure you've noticed the clear difference straight away. For the arrival of Prince William and Catherine, you can see that they're given an ordered greeting, that they are placed upon some chairs and they're carried, which is a traditional form of recognition within Tuvalu, and also allows them to be regaled, that people are pleased to see them, that there is cheering and clapping and music being played. It is orchestrated in an appropriate fashion. They're welcomed as guests, and there is a procedure that's being followed. It's a royal welcome, because they are royal. The pomp and ceremony is rolled out for them and is done so in an orchestrated and constructed way. Thus, it all runs smoothly and accords them with the respect that the citizens of Tuvalu wish to convey to them. Then look at the Sussexes. It's chaotic. This is their arrival. Wandering along hand in hand, Richter's grin plastered, but there's no formal welcome. Security personnel around them, staff surrounding them, a woman attempting to do some twerking at one point. This is their arrival. Now, of course, this one's wife would spin it to suggest, though, we don't want all of that ceremony. That's not us. Nonsense. She's behaving like a working royal, for the reasons that I explained earlier on. And she would expect there to be a welcome along similar lines, that she would almost be heralded as she appears, trumpeted, that the red carpet would be laid out, that they would be welcomed in such a fashion. But for this one's wife, it hasn't panned out that way. Instead, it's almost like a scrum of people who are saying, hang on a minute, there's two people who arrived who are meant to be important, come and look. And there's people milling around them all. They're headed in the direction of where they need to go. But it's chaotic, it's disorganised. And that demonstrates how, even though they pretend to be royals, that they play at being royals, they don't have the cachet or status because people recognise that whilst they have titles, they're not there actually in a royal capacity. And whilst they're treated courteously and respectfully and civilly, there's no criticism of the host country, but rather... It demonstrates the differing reactions that exist in relation to genuine and real royalty and a renegade pair who are just playing at it. It throws into stark contrast the way that people react to them both. And whilst, of course, this one's wife's narcissism will dismiss any suggestion of criticism by maintaining that she prefers this informal arrangement, believe me, as a hoity-toity narcissist, she would much more be treated to the former rather than the latter. I'm H.D. Tudor. Thank you for watching.